in during this talk I will try to speak about uh, some principles uh, in the structural biology of big macromolecule complexes which we use in order to get crystals and finally solve the structure of, of the ribosome. And um, so during last 30 years we solved the structure of two principal ribosomes. One was the first bacterial ribosome which is presented here and happened at about 2000. And 10 years later, we saw the structure of first eukaryotic ribosome, and this is East ribosome represented here. So it's a two basic ribosome models which we use in our lab to study mechanism of protein biosynthesis and uh, also to, to study effect of some inhibitors, which I'm going to show it at the end of my talk today. Before going, before going to, to, uh, to the structure, to explanation of the ribosome structure, which is already written in, basically written in all textbooks, I will speak about some, some knowledge which we had in the beginning of this, uh, of, uh, of this problem. As you remember, at, at the year, let's say, uh, 30 years ago, the basic information about, uh, uh, about macromolecule complexes, RNA protein macromolecule complexes, mostly uh, we had from viruses. And virus organization is uh, what we knew about it, that the nucle nu nucleic acid inside of the capsule and the, and the sphere of the virus organized by one coat protein symmetrically packed. That was general information what we had at that time. And, and it's interesting that the knowledge and this, the knowledge of people who study ribosome structure was basically the same. We were fighting what is on the surface, the proteins or RNA. So finally, we, we know now structure is different. But at that time, as you can imagine, the first, the first very important uh, conclusion made by electron microscopy study of the ribosome when people come up with the structure uh, from two laboratories, one from Russia, Vasiliev Laboratory, and James Lake from, from United States, they conclude that the two subunits organization of the ribosome and both subunits are asymmetrical. And that was the first step when they can describe that the body of subunit and the head of subunit, the core and shape of the large ribosomal subunit, that came from electron microscopy. And the resolution was about 50 angstrom resolution. You can see the figures, which are uh, pictures what they obtained from electron microscopy. For non-specialists like me, I can watch at this at these uh, images during the week and I cannot come up with this model. But uh, as you can see that they were able to come and they were absolutely right. In general, it is like this. Second thing what's happened, uh, so finally by development and two-dimensional gel electrophoresis system in, in laboratory of Günther Wittmann, Carl Schmidt was able to separate at one gel all composition of, of the ribosomal protein, proteins. And that was the principal difference from, 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 e, uh, from uh, virus organization. Because in virus case, we have you know, several proteins, maximum, mostly one code protein. And here we see 50 individual proteins. And they were able to, to separate and name them by, uh, by, the, by the names like uh, if, if it is S protein, means small ribosomal subunit. If it is L protein, means large ribosomal subunit protein. One more revolutionary step was done by, <coughs> by Harry Noller, first of all, and also uh, one group in, in, in Strasbourg, led by, by Jean-Pierre Ribel uh, laboratory. They solved the structure, uh, actually, they solved the sequence of, uh, of two ribosomal RNA uh, and predicted the secondary structure of, it, of, of, of both of them. Again, the prediction of secondary structure and the sequence is, it was absolutely well done. Uh, is so much correct that we still use that, 
data which were obtained 30 years ago. One more important thing was what's done in, in laboratory in, uh, of uh, Alexander Spirin is the principle of organization of ribosome. If to take the ribosome and incubate it in a high salt, what is going to happen? We will get extraction of the proteins from the RNA. And if to keep magnesium high enough, it will keep the structure of RNA. So and what they show that by, by salt treatment, if you remove all proteins from the ribosome, the ribosomal RNA still keep the shape of subunit in case of 50S and in case of 30S the same. So it was for the first time shown that the basic part of the ribosome is RNA and it's, keep the, and it's formed the shape of the ribosome and the proteins are just involved in the business of stabilization and, and some, something else, uh, something uh, more than that. And approximately that time, uh, uh, yeah, I, I came, I, I started to work approximately at that time uh, and uh, was uh, an idea that, okay, maybe one day we can start to use crystallography to, to, to solve the structure of ribosome. And the, and the beginning of crystallography was made by, by study of three different laboratories. I'm not going to speak about them. One laboratory actually from Italy, another one from Germany, and the third one was in Cambridge, and then they moved to Stanford. This is laboratory of Anvin, who th for the first time, they show three-dimensional crystals of the ribosomes. How they got it? There is one natural phenomena. If to take X, for example, chick embryos, and incubate X at minus, uh, at, pardon, uh, in a cold room during the night, the ribosomes in the morning in the cells will be organized in a two-dimensional crystals in cell. And that phenomena was studied a lot during, uh, d by, by these three laboratories, but Milligan and, and Anvin they were able to get three-dimensional crystals from these two-dimensional crystals. And that was the beginning of crystallography of ribosome. Then another group, uh, led by Ada Yonat in Gunther Wittmann department in, in West, uh, in, um, yeah. huh? Berlin. in Berlin, yes, in oh, Berlin. I think she no, what, from my knowledge that she, yes, maybe she started in Israel, but uh, yeah. But the first result, what they published, that was the publication about, <coughs> about the crystallization of a large ribosomal subunit. And here they made second step. For the first time they show that you, we can grow crystals of large ribosomal subunits so big and to get diffraction or from these crystals. And that was beginning of business. And later, five or six years later, the same group obtained crystals which were diffracting to three angstrom resolution, which is showing that they could solve the structure of the ribosome at atomic level with the interpretation which we need by, by, by crystallography when we can explain everything on, on chemical level. So that was the business. And so we entered to the field uh, by, introduction, by introducing new organism for purification of ribosomes. And that was Thermos Thermophilus ribosomes. Thermos Thermophilus ribosomes was uh, quite stable bacteria because the, the optimum temperature is 75 degrees uh, for growing of this, uh, of this bacteria and isolation of any compound from, from, from them uh, allowed us to, to, to do structural study. Actually crystallization, this is the... So what, they, what we found that if to, if to look at the, at the dissociation curve of the ribosome from thermos thermophilus, just look here, so normally they dissociate by this curve. 
And we found that the, the, the optimum magnesium concentration for ribosome is about, for dissociation, is about 20, 20 millimolar. So the curve is showing that we have extremely high heterogeneity of the ribosomes because some of them dissoci dissociate early at 20, at 20 millimolar and some of them dissociate at 10 millimolar. By development of special purification conditions, which named tight couples, uh, when we separated t ribosomes which are tightly associated by two subunits tightly associate, we change the curve for very, very sharp dissociation conditions, which show that the final product which we have is much more homogeneous than, than the initial one. So that was the first point of crystallization because, because we, we, could, we, we were sure that initial, initial ribosomes are uh, in a high quality. So then we compare also by two-dimensional gel uh, what is the difference between E. coli system and, and thermosthermophilus system. As you can see, in general, it's the same type of, the same type of proteins. And <coughs> just individually, they are, they are slightly different. Then we develop also cell-free system for thermosthermophilus, showing that the ribosomes are very active in, in our, in our in our cell-free system at 65 degrees optimum, uh, they, they, they produce polyphenylalanine in poly-U uh, dependent system. One more important thing. The final product which we isolate, and this is common for, for big macromolecule complexes, this final product has to be very stable and compact. At that time, in our institute, Igor Sirdyuk was working in collaboration with Jod Zakai uh, from Grenoble. And they developed, by measurement of uh, radius duration, uh, measurement of compactness of the ribosome dependent, dependent from, uh, dependent from uh, molecular weight. Here is a sedimentation coefficient. And, see this, and here is molecular weight. And you can see that plenty of, plenty of uh, uh, like 70S ribosome, large ribosomal subunit, small ribosomal subunit, the, t the, 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 uh, the small compact RNA, uh, RNA fragment, they are all in a one, one line. If, if the comp if the compactness of, of the particle is not good enough, uh, the, the particle will not be in the same line. So finally, we got our 70s ribosome in this line to be sure that everything is correct, and we went for crystallization. That is kind of general principles what we use, uh, which we were using before, and until now actually, in characterization of, of our complexes. That's why they are crystallizable. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, uh, it is diff difficult to get ribosome crystals. So first what we did is uh, we, got, we got crystals of small ribosomal subunit and then also uh, full ribosome, 70S ribosome. And one new crystal form we obtained in, in United States and we solved the structure of first bacteria ribosome from this crystal form. And that ribosomes were already with messenger RNA and three tRNAs inside. When, when we <coughs> that was very important because presence of messenger RNA and tRNA stabilized the ribosome complex so much that we could get the crystals. Basically, we use the same knowledge in order to get crystals of first East ribosomes, and we, we, we finally solved the structure of East ribosome as well. So, <coughs> the bacteria ribosome is just to remind you that the bacteria ribosome has two subunits, and you can see here the small subunit and the large subunit. Uh, the, the, the RNA in gray is the, the significant part of, of, the, of the structure of ribosome, and it is about 300 uh, 3,000 nucleotides in a large subunit and twice smaller in a, in, in a small subunit. Together is about 50 proteins, 
and if to calculate uh, the amount of atoms which we, which we determined is about 150,000 atoms per, per ribosome. Um, I want to show you the small movie just to remind you how we, how we were working with... Uh, because this movie we prepare for students to show to show how ribosome <coughs> works. This is large subunit, small subunit, initiation complex with messenger RNA and one tRNA, initial tRNA there. To simplify the movie, the tRNA comes without TU factor. It just comes individually, like non-enzymatic translation. And you can see how the tRNA moves in the ribosome, and each time one additional amino acid incorporated in the growing peptide. And this is kind of uh, schematic view how what what I was showing in my first in my in my first presentation. Now, as I said, that we have two systems. One is bacteria system, and another one is uh, yeast system, which is eukaryotic system. In both cases, we would like to study. I'm going to speak only about this in general. That is, uh, we would like to study how in bacteria case, how antibiotics works, how they are able by the small molecule can inhibit completely all system. For example, you can, we, can look at the, uh, we can look at the elongation cycle, which is presented here. For example, this is the binding cycle of tRNA. This is, this is the, the, the uh, binding of G factor translocation step. As you can see in the small squares, in every step there is one or several inhibitors which can block completely function of the ribosome and production of the uh, of the uh, of uh, of the rib um, of the protein in the cell. And many of these and many of these uh, antibiotics studied by by different laboratories in in the world. And what what is what is what was shown that basically antibiotics inhibit function of three different three different places: peptidyl transferase center and beginning of peptidyl peptidyl tunnel decoding center and the tRNA, mRNA binding sites. When you can look, when we can look at the interface of small ribosomal subunit, this is the known antibiotics binding sites, like tetracycline, for example, EDN, or aminoglycosides. This is messenger RNA, and this is A site tRNA binding site and P site. So that is, that is the location of two two type of groups. One is about here, messenger RNA, another one is here. The third group, as I said, it's, it's, a, it's a slice of 50S ribosomal subunit, tRNA in P site, and this is the tunnel of growing peptide. This is peptidyl transferase center and beginning of the tunnel. The all antibiotics <coughs> of, of the large ribosomal subunit located here. That is the general conclusion uh, of, of the action of, of, of known antibiotics and it is kind of basic material for pharmaceutical companies to study, to study and develop new antibiotics or to optimize the, the antibiotics which are already known. And one example I will show you, it's like a re, uh, this is a result of a study of our group in um, it's a, it's a uh, uh, so, was was question is is about tetracycline interaction on the ribosome because in the first two publications about tetracycline it was found that from two to six binding sites of one antibiotic to the ribosome. So after clarification and after again using the full model containing messenger RNA, tRNAs, and the full ribosome, is only one binding site of tetracycline was found. But for us, was important not tetracycline binding site itself. The, we had another question. In the market today, in, in actually what we are using today is not tetracycline. We are using for, for mm, 
in case of bacterial infections, we are using modification of tetracycline. And the most popular tetracycline modification is this tetracycline. As you can see that it is basically tetracycline with modification here. And this modification completely changed, the not completely, but it's changed behavior of tetracycline. If the modern bacteria are able to protect themselves from, from classical tetracycline, but the new tetracycline working very, very, very well against bacteria. He presented the, the all interactions of these of this molecules on the, on the ribosome. I just will remind you the binding site of tetracycline. If this is tRNA in P site on the ribosome, the tetracycline binds right before P site in A site. You can see here density of tetracycline <coughs> and tetracycline block the binding of, of the tRNA in A site and like that stop the protein biosynthesis. So as I said, we saw the structure of tetracycline and tetracycline in high resolution and we can describe all these interactions again and we found that one additional interaction has tetracycline on the ribosome and this additional interaction completely changed the binding activity uh, the, the affinity of, 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 uh, of tetracycline on the ribosome. Um, I would like to show a movie again because it's, it's easier to, to, to by visualization. This is what we, what we see before. The translation is going and the tRNAs are coming and messenger RNA, uh, messen this is messenger RNA, this is growing. And now we see that tetracycline is coming to the ribosome. Everything in the chemical format, huh? it's, so it binds to A site and actually does not allow it to bind tRNA as you can see here because we have sterical distortion. There is no way to have, to have tetracycline and tRNA simultaneously in the A site. That's why, that's why in the presence of tetracycline, the, every coming tRNA will, will, will leave. But tetracycline doesn't have very high affinity, uh, uh, not absolute, let's say, uh, strong binding on the ribosome. And only in the presence of tetracycline we have this uh, stop of translation. But if tetracycline is out, uh, translation can continue. But if to compare tetracycline with tetracycline, just a second. This is tetracycline uh, chemistry, stereochemistry. And if to compare with tetracycline, this part is identical and here we have modification. And this modification add one additional contact on the, on the ribosome. This is basic contacts and here we have one additional, this one, the stacking, uh, yes. <coughs> one additional contact on the ribosome which increase uh, affinity of uh, tetracycline and, and like that tetracycline is much more effective in, in, uh, in a, uh, inhibition of protein synthesis. So now we have uh, eukaryotic ribosome and I would like to make introduction of eukaryotic ribosome story. So in if to look at the uh, uh, translation, translation uh, elongation cycle and translation cycle, let's say, of, of bacteria case and, and eukaryotic case, we have common only elongation part. The initiation is different and, and uh, termination and, and recycling is also quite different. But elongation is basic, basic thing and it is, it is, it is kind of common for eukaryotes and, and, and prokaryotes. When we look to the structure of, <coughs> of bacteria ribosome in, in, in East ribosome, we can find part of, part of the ribosome which, is, which has name, we have named it core because it is common for bacteria and for East. It's about two megadalton, uh, two megadalton uh, molecular weight. But 
uh, as you can see that the, the molecular weight between bacteria and, and, and um, yeast is about one megadalton difference. Now, if to compare yeast ribosome with human ribosome, which is not solved yet by, by X-ray crystallography, this, this part of this, uh, this, this ribosome has also one megadalton plus. But the difference between yeast ribosome and, and, and human ribosome is only RNA additive. A, it, additional, additional molecular weight comes only from RNA because the composition of proteins here and here practically the same. And more than that, the additional elements comes only from the large ribosomal subunit from the back side, which is not functional site in terms of basic function. So it means that the small ribosomal subunit in yeast and in human, they are very similar. So hu we can use yeast uh, small ribosomal subunit to study initiation of translation, for example, and make significant, no, serious extrapolation to human system. And just showing that even without human system, yet we, we can work on yeast system. <coughs> so in terms, of, in, terms of, uh, in terms of RNA, you can see secondary structure of RNAs. In red, you can see, w this is expansion segments, this additional RNA elements on, on the ribosome, which appear in eukaryotic system. In terms of proteins, there are 34 proteins which are common for bacteria and for yeast, and 20 individual for, uh, specific for bacteria and 45 specific for eukaryotes. Such kind of mixture of, uh, um, how to say, additional things or specialized things in bacteria and, and eukaryotes. If to look at the structure of, uh, of uh, expansion, RNA expansion segments, you can easily see that all of them located not in functional interface area between two ribosomal subunits. They are in the back side of large subunit, in the back side solvent, solvent side of small ribosomal subunits. Of course, question appears, what is the function of, this, of these elements? We don't know. <laughs> it's just generally, if to, if to look at the protein synthesis scheme, which I show in the beginning, what is the difference between eukaryotes and prokaryotes? It's initiation of translation and, re, uh, and uh, termination and uh, recycling. And both of these, initiation, termination and recycling, is highly regulated, and especially in eukaryotes. Maybe all these new elements appear because of this level of regulation what, what we have in, a, in a eukaryotic systems. That this is future. It's what we, we, we will try to, to learn all of this. So as I said, now in eukaryotic system, we have 80 proteins instead of, instead of uh, 50 proteins in bacteria. And, and, and here also, you can easily see that some of them, like in yellow, the very conservative proteins, and some of them completely new type of proteins specific only for eukaryotes. In some cases, you can see that the globular part is, is, is common for both, for, for both uh, classes, but, uh, but there are some additional elements also. And this also needs to be explained. In a general, Conclusion, when you look at the structure of, eukary of, of eukaryotic ribosome and mark all specific elements which appear in eukaryotic ribosome in red, you can see that the basic functional sites like peptidotransferase center, this is the cent interface of large ribosomal subunits, like decoding center, this is interface of small ribosomal subunits, they are conservative. question, which I have no idea how to answer, but uh, I can just discuss about it. That the question is, how antibiotic is distinguish active site in bacteria and doesn't kill us when we use that antibiotic? So it means that there are some small elements which we need to learn. Because in general, when you look like by general analysis, you don't see them. 
can be modifications, can be just small uh, differences in nucleotides or small differences in amino acids uh, between bacteria case and, and, and one example I'm going to show later. <coughs> So this is just to show that the interface also has uh, differences between in eukaryotes and prokaryotes. One very interesting thing is that in terms of relationship of two subunits in eukaryotes, there are two uh, proteins behave like arms. Here you can see them. They, they, keep, they keep the ribosome uh, two subunits together during, during translation. <coughs> One interesting thing we found just by solving the structure of ribosome. When we solved the structure of each ribosome, we found one protein which is not ribosomal protein. And this protein has name STM1 protein. This is shock, uh, let's say, stress protein. And it, has a, it, has a, it doesn't have a shape. It's like in some pieces just alpha helices. And it's lying on the, uh, on the ribosome from small subunit to large subunit, you can see the slice from the view from the top. It starts on the small subunit, taking the space of messenger RNA path, goes to A site, to P site, and then make a link between two subunits and end it in the head of large ribosomal subunit. So it's actually create for us a lot of inconvenience because we would like to study function of this, of this ribosome in our system. And, and this protein is taking the messenger RNA and tRNA sites. So that's also another question. It's necessary, we also already got the crystals of the ribosome without STM1, and now we can start to work on function of, of the ribosome. Uh, one more positive thing what happened in, 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 this, uh, in this structure determination of East ribosome. So we had two ribosomes in, in a symmetric unit in this, <coughs> in this crystal form. And uh, both of them, they, are, uh, they, have different, they have different conformation. And this is comparison of these two different conformations. You can see rotation of, of uh, uh, rotation of uh, small subunits on the f f surface of large subunit and also um, swiveling of the head of, of the small subunit. That related to ribosome function duri during translocation. That information comes from cryo-electron microscopy and now we know that we can study function or translocation mechanism on our ribosomes, uh, on our crystals as well. Oops. That's only for introduction. Uh, no, pardon. For just to introduce you that <coughs> because we saw the structure of eukaryotic ribosome, people in ribosome community decided that it's time to make some kind of regular regularization in, in the protein nomenclature in, in eukaryotic system. So the suggestion was to take the prokaryotic system, which is already, I show you, we have names of the individual proteins, 50 proteins with names, and now we have eukaryotic system, which will keep prokaryotic nomenclature plus nomenclature of uh, eukaryotes. It creates problems for communities who are not in the ribosome field, and I will show you that. Yeah, as I said, that bacteria system was named by, by Wittmann Laboratory from, from S, S1, it's a small ribosomal subunit, to S21 and SL, L1 to L33. This is, that was the nomenclature of uh, bacteria. And now we published well, this year in uh, current opinion in structural biology of it is publication of I don't know 15 or 20 people in the ribosome field who got agreement that the new nomenclature of, of the eukaryotic ribosomes will be this which will keep nomenclature of bacterial ribosomes plus 
uh, nomenclature of uh, eukaryotes, and it will be names like that. If it is bacteria-specific protein, only bacteria-specific, it will have B S1, for example. If it is eukaryotic-specific uh, protein, it will have E S7, and if it is universal, it will have U. As I explained before, there are some common things, and there are specific for eukaryotes and specific for for bacteria. Just don't be surprised because it creates real problem, especially for PubMed. You can see here in the new nomenclature, this protein has name S2. In bacteria system, it comes from bacteria. It has S2. But in yeast, it was S0. And in human, it was SA. It will, yes, yes. It will take some time <laughs> to accept this or not accept, because there is no agreement in community. It's, it is what accepted by ribosome community. That's what the E. coli groups had the same battle back in the 70s. Yes, exactly. No yes, exactly. Because in, in, in bacteria case, it was already this situation in 70s, when we had four nomenclatures simultaneously. And then people come together, sit, and take, okay, only one. Now we did the same, but it's not accepted yet. <coughs> we'll see. Um, yes, now about, about, about uh, inhibitors of eukaryotic system. It's actually very important to study inhibitors on eukaryotic system as well, because, because it is... Uh, this is, it could be at some level, some kind of antibiotics like against, like natural, natural uh, small molecules working against, uh, against bacteria in case of antibiotics. And here it could be specifically working against uh, pathogenic organisms. It's just an idea. So we finish and uh, we are going to publish uh, 16 different type of inhibitors which we analyzed uh, on, on bacteria, on, on, pardon, on yeast ribosome. Uh, so, yeah, just, just, to show, just to show you an example why it is so much important to study this kind of inhibitors. So first of all, m m scientific reason is inhibitors help us in manipulation with, uh, with uh, when we study ribosome function. It helps us to fix the ribosome at one functional step. <coughs> but for medical reason, for example, there is, as I said, that the, you can see here differences in the structure of yeast ribosome and trypanosoma ribosome, which is published in cryo-electron microscopy study. And such a big difference has certainly allowed us to think that we can develop the drug which will work against trypanosoma instead of working against human system or, in this case, comparison with, with yeast. There are some drugs which are active and already used in the United States for which can... We, the, w this is anti-cancer anti -cancer drugs which eff effectively uh, low down the activity of, of the cancer cells and, and yes, this is one example. And another example, in, in this is uh, inhibitors which helps in a, in a genetic disorder cases when, when, when we have stop codon in the middle of messenger RNA in order to ribosome give a chance to read through all, all, the, all the messenger RNA, some drugs helps to do that. And this is human ribosome, as you, so this is eukaryotic system. So we develop, we develop for, for such kind of analysis, we develop the very strongly reproducible uh, crystallization technology and data collection technology for yeast ribosome. And finally, we were able to, to go from, from, like usually when we use all the structures, one crystal is already very good, if, uh, effective material. But we, 
we have about 70% of crystals are diffracting quite high resolution. And we use that and we collect data until 2.8 angstrom resolution for East ribosome with inhibitors. And then if to summarize all the inhibitors, 16 inhibitors which, I, which I'm talking about, they are located in four different places. In bacteria, found three places. In, in, east, uh, in east system, in eukaryotes, there are one additional place here. Is inhibitor, inhibitors are blocking eTRNA on the ribosome or don't allow, they don't allow tRNA move from P side to E side. I will show you this later. And the rest is the same, is peptidyl transferase center and uh, decoding center and mRNA binding cent cent uh, space again. So I will show you one example of, of such study is cyclohexamine. Cyclohexamine is, is, is inhibitor which is well known and very specifically working against eukaryotic system and doesn't work in bacteria. So we saw the structure of two of them from the same class, class cyclohexamide and lactimidomycin. You can see the quality of density even whole in, 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 this, uh, in, this, in this structure. And we saw the structure also of CCA and of tRNA because it has, specific, uh, it has affinity to E site for comparison, the binding sites. And now <coughs> we can describe the pocket of cyclohexamide binding. And you can see, like in previous, in, 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 in bacteria cases also, the inhibitor works and binds to the ribosome only by binding with ribosomal RNA. Practically no examples today when we have inhibitor working against proteins. So here we have all contacts with ribosomal RNA. The closest protein, the, the protein L44E, which is, which is specific for eukaryotes. And that is interesting because now we can, and this is another, another, uh, another and this is lactimidomycin, which I said that, uh, which is, which is this from the same family like cyclohexamine. So now, if to look at the two structures, eukaryotic structure and bacteria, ribos and bacteria ribosome structure, you can see differences in this pocket. This is protein specific for, for eukaryotes in eukaryotic system. And instead of in bacteria system, instead of this protein, we have a loop of RNA, which disturbing the binding site of cyclohexamine. And for the first time, we can explain why Structurally, we can explain why cyclohexamide works only in eukaryotes and they don't work in, in bacteria. So the same way we can, we can study other inhibitors and get information for, uh, for this um, in direction of medical use, for example. And also we saw the structure, uh <coughs> we saw the structure of, uh, of CCA end of, of the tRNA on the ribosome. As you can see here, CCA end has the same binding site as, as a cyclohexamide. And it's explain us how cyclohexamide works and why it blocks the ribosome function. It, it, it disturbing the binding site of tRNA in E site. So it means in the presence of cyclohexamide, the tRNA cannot come from P site to E site. That's all, yes. Uh, just wanted to say thank you for my colleagues. Uh, Gulnara Yusupov, I already said many times that we are, we are working all, all, all the time together. But first of all, I want to mention, there is no photo here, I want to mention name uh, Adam Bensham. He was the person who crystallized the first East, tri uh, East ribosomes and solved the structure at low resolution. Then uh, involvement of these two people, Sergei Melnikov and Nikola Garodolubres, they are responsible for improvement of quality of crystals and data collection at high resolution uh, of, of the East ribosome. And Nikola Garodolubres, together with uh, Irina 
Prokhorova. They solved the structure of 16 different inhibitors of, of eukaryotic ribosome. And now we have more or less, in, in, how to say, view of, of the work of inhibitors of, on eukaryotic system. Thank you. Thank you.